What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm back with another anti-tier limit, anti-meta deck profile. Now keep in mind this deck is built to beat tier limits which is seemingly a tier 0 deck right now but it's just really good against any meta deck in general. And the deck that I'm talking about is Yo Senju. The really cool thing about Yo Senju is there's so many different ways to play it and in today's video we've built it to counter the best decks in today's format. Now if you guys do like these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here on Spanko deck profiles combo videos dual videos all that good stuff it's right here on the channel so make sure you guys are subscribed to stay tuned into all of that we're on the way to 8,000 subscribers so if you guys haven't subscribed already it's free it's literally free we hit 7,500 not too long ago we're on the way to 8,000 I believe we can make it happen so make sure you guys are subscribed I don't want to take up too much of your time and so with that let's get right into the deck profile so just before we get into the deck profile, there's one thing I'm going to say, and I say it every single time in my Yosendra videos, and it's not going to end today, and that is these ratios that you guys see in today's video are the ratios that I think are the best ratios. You don't really need to be playing any of the other names. If you guys want to be playing this deck as competitively as possible, you don't want to play those names that do really niche things. You want to play the best names in your deck, and the commas here are the best names. So let's start things off with three Yosendra comma one. One of your best cards, of course, is gets the to bounce a card your opponent controls to the hand and that's of course really powerful because it doesn't trigger off a lot of the graveyard effects that a lot of the meta relevant cards in today's format have so that's why comma one is really good three comma two comma two is just your biggest body on top of that if your opponent sets up a board and you just want to do a little bit of poke damage just to go into time this card is great because it can attack your opponent directly and then we're playing three comma three comma three lets you search another card when a yosenju monster does battle damage that's why comma three is really good because he's essentially a searcher for your deck and then we are playing Playing two Yosenju Sujik. This card is kind of like an honest, but on top of that, when it's on the field, you can boost one of your monsters by a thousand attack points, and then it's just going to be helping you do a lot more poke damage. That's what this deck really aims to do. It really just aims to stun your opponent out of the game and just do poke damage. Now, you're not always going to be OTKing with this deck. There are ways you can OTK. However, the thing is with this deck is you really just want to play cards that are turn skips against the meta. Keep in mind, this is an anti meta build like Yosenju. This is a build that is specially built to beat tier element to Shizu. If you guys saw the YCS, the most recent one in Pasadena, Ishizu tier limit took 25 out of the top 32 spots. So for that reason, you guys understand that, you know, we're in a tier zero format. To be able to combat against a tier zero format, you're going to be playing the rest of the cards in the deck outside of the core to just beat that deck. So for that reason, we are, of course, playing three Dimension Shifter. Dimension Shifter is obviously a very powerful card. It pretty much shuts off your opponent's turn. But the really cool thing about Shifter is it's good into so many decks. Yes, we're trying to beat tier limit Ishizu. However, this card is just really good into a lot of different deck so that's why you're playing three shifter we're playing the one dimensional fissure as well as the one macro cosmo three day shifter is not enough if you're starting your turn and you're going first and you have a dimensional fissure let's say you don't have a shifter you have a fissure that's another copy of a card that pretty much shuts out the tier limit matchup and if they don't hard draw back row hate against this deck then they're pretty much stuck so that's why i really like the fissure same thing with macro cosmo macro cosmo pretty much acts as the fifth dimensional shifter so you guys can see we're just playing cards that are not gonna let our opponents cards hit the graveyard that is the most important thing and that's why we're maxing out on these then we're playing two tanky of course tanky searches any one of our yo senjus which by the way i know i already said it earlier i'm gonna say it again these are the Yosenju ratios you guys want to play. Honestly, you can even cut Sujik to one now, but I really like two Sujik just because it does help you go for game a lot of time. Again, of course, this deck does stun your opponent out of the game. However, you do kind of struggle in doing a lot of damage or actually winning games sometimes. So that's why I like the two Sujik. But that's why I'm also playing two Tanky because it gets you to any of your Yosenjus so that you can help push for damage a lot easier. Then we're playing two Duality. Of course, you guys see we do not special summon in this deck. Helps you dig into your deck even deeper, especially with all the trap cards that you guys are playing with all the floodgates this card helps you get to that speaking of cards that help you get to your floodgates and traps and all these other cards is you're playing three pot of extravagance now you can play prod of prosperity don't get me wrong prosperity is a very very good card and it's insanely powerful in a deck like this one however the reason i like extravagance is because you'd rather just dig for more cards in this deck if that makes sense so prosperity of course is really good because you get to pick the card that you're digging into which obviously in a lot of situations prosperity is a better card than extravagance however in this scenario specifically because 
because there's so many cards you want to draw, because there's so many different combinations of cards that just work against the tier limit matchup or work against other matchups in general, just overall, the fact is you want to draw more cards or as much cards as possible so that not only do you have your Senju monsters in your hands, but you're also backed up with the floodgate trap cards. So that's why you want to play extravagance. You just want to get as many cards to your hand as possible. And that's going to help you win the game, right? So that's why we're playing the extravagance. This is pretty much our draw engine. I got this comment before. I'm sure people already know, but if you don't know, extravagance and duality work together because duality doesn't let you draw a card. It lets you add a card to your hand. It doesn't draw a card. So if you draw extravagance plus duality, then you're still in a really good spot, right? So that's why you're playing these ratios. Then we're playing for the floodgates, three rivalry of the warlords, as well as three goes in match. Why are we playing rivalry and goes in match? One, because they're good into so many different decks in the format, but two, all your monsters are beast warrior and wind. So you can actually play rivalry and goes in match, not be affected by it at all. And now your opponent has to deal with these back row. Now keep in mind, a lot of people are not on lightning storm are not on board breakers in the main deck right now. And that's because tier limit is such a prominent deck and the board breakers are not really good against tier limits. So for that reason, this deck does get kind of a little boost because you're not afraid of your opponent having those board breakers, having feather duster, lightning storms, all that stuff in the main deck so that you lose to those kind of cards. So your game ones can go really, really well, especially if you win the die roll. That's why we're playing the three goes in and the three rivalry. Of course, we have to be playing this. It's good against a tier limit matchup, which we want to be, but it's also just good against so many other matchups as well. And then we're playing the one terraforming. Why? Because we're playing two Necro Valley. Honestly, Necro Valley might be the most broken field spell in the game right now. Obviously, activating Necro Valley against a tier limit matchup is just FTK. Like, they're not going to be able to play through this. And again, you guys can see how much hate we're playing, right? We're playing two Necro Valley, three Shifter, Fissure, as well as Macro Cosmo. We do not want to lose to tier limits. Now, yes, going second might be a little bit more difficult, but again, we still have the Shifter, which going second Shifter is still very, very powerful. So we are playing the two Necro Valley as well as the one Mystic Mine. The reason I still like playing the one Mystic Mine is against the other matchup ups in the format of course sprite is still a thing yes ishizu tier limit is a tier zero deck it's the best deck of the game the most prominent deck in the game however there are other decks that still exist and mystic mind helps you beat those other kind of decks i know mystic mind is that card i'm sorry for showing it off but it is really good in a deck like this one another reason why it's really good is because you can actually play under your own mystic mind remember how i said comma 2 has a really cool effect where it can attack directly well if you activate your mystic mind and your opponent doesn't have an answer to it you can just keep normal summoning your comma 2 attack directly for 900 and then your commas bounce back to your hand at the end phase so you're gonna go comma two attack bounce comma two attack bounce and you can do that turn after turn after turn that's why comma two plus mystic mind synergizes really well and that's why i really like mystic mind in the main deck so that's why i really like mystic mind in the main deck and of course necro valley is just way too important you have to be playing two of these with the terraforming and the mystic mind and then we're playing some non-floodgate traps but these traps essentially are really good against the metagame as well not only are they good against tier limits which is one of the best things that it is good against but it's also good against a lot of the other meta decks so we're playing three different dimension ground if you guys thought we weren't banishing enough cards we're banishing more we're playing three ddg we're playing two ice dragons prisons as well as two trap trick to get into these trap cards now why are we playing the three ddg now i understand that you guys might be thinking but spankle you have so much tier limit hate you have ddg you have necro valley you have shifter you have fissure you have macro cosmo well this is really necessary i'm going to be honest with you against today's format this is very necessary now keep this in mind against tier limits you're not always going to draw a shifter you're not always going to draw a fissure but what you're doing is you're maxing out on the amount of cards that makes it so that your opponent can't play now what happens if you draw multiples let's say i draw a ddg plus a macro cosmo okay well i'll flip my ddg keep in mind this is also a chainable trap so if they do have back row hate you can still flip the ddg and shut them out for a whole turn right but on top of that if they have an out to one of them so let's say they have an out to dimensional fissure then do they have the second out to ddg do they have the out to necro valley so drawing multiples of these cards is never a bad thing because you want to play it slow you want your opponent to play at your pace as soon as they're playing at your pace you have the advantage which is the most important thing in this deck and keep in mind ddg is also just good against everything if a sprite player's cards are all getting banished they're gonna have a difficult time playing especially with the frog engine elf not being able to summon back a level two etc etc so this card is really good against sprite this card is also just really good against anything you might see at your locals the graveyard is such a prominent thing in today's game and then we're 
we're playing the two IDP. IDP is really good against the tier limit matchup, also really good against the sprite matchup, also really good against just generic matchups. Again, this deck, yes, is built to beat tier limits, it's built to beat Ishizu. However, the really cool thing about these cards is they're good against everything, and that's that's what I really like about it. So that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. I wanted to keep it at 40. Very, very consistent. Again, you have five draw cards in the deck, you have a ton of anti tier limit cards. This deck is insanely consistent. But moving on to the extra deck here, the extra deck is not that important besides a couple cards. So we're playing two Garura. This is because I'm showing you guys a little pseudo side deck over here. You guys can see a little pseudo side deck. I'm going to talk about that. I'm not going to go in depth with it because your side deck can always be built for your metagame for your locals. However, I just wanted to show you guys a little pseudo or just a little idea you guys can do. So we're playing the two Garura and the two Mud Dragon for the super polys, of course, helps you break boards. We're playing the three Lightning Chidori. This card's also a wind. So the really cool thing about that is it helps you play through Gozen match, which is really nice. We're playing the three Cowboy. Again, you want your opponent to play at your pace. So the really cool thing is if you're getting closer to time, you can go Cowboy for game. But on top of that, all your commas are going to be doing a lot of chip damage. So if you end up putting your opponent down to like 800 life points, 600 life points, 700, then you can go Cowboy for game. The really cool thing about Cowboy as well is that you're playing Mud Dragon. Mud Dragon is a level four that you can make off Super Poly. So you can actually break your opponent's board and then go ahead and use that Mud Dragon to make a Cowboy, which is very, very powerful. So that's why you're playing three Cowboy, probably the most important card in your extra deck outside of the Dweller. We're of course playing three Dweller. If you didn't see enough anti tier limit cards already, this is another one. Dweller, of course, is such an important card in today's format. So Dweller and Cowboy are the two most important cards in the extra deck and then we're just playing two Zeus here because if your dweller sits on the board for a turn you can just attack with it make a Zeus and then you know you have another form of disruption especially after you've used the dweller materials so that's why I like the two Zeus here and then talking about the side deck real quick again I don't want to go too much in detail because the side deck should really be built up to personal preference this is not like a side deck you guys should build this side deck one for one it's just different options of cards that you guys can play in your side deck so of course I think Kaijus are really really powerful right now especially with Flundery still being a relevant deck you can play Godarlas to out the barrier statue but again you're not special summoning anyways at all so for that reason it doesn't really matter you're always going to beat over the barrier statue because the kaijus are also really powerful just in general to break opponents boards you're playing the third necro valley if you ever have the tier limit matchup you can always side in the third necro valley especially when you go first just activating necro valley is so powerful playing three super poly helps you break boards there's a called by the grave that you guys can play because you guys see that i'm not playing it in the main deck you guys can definitely play 41 and play it in the main deck however i just didn't think you needed it in the main deck another anti-tier limit card is soldier Drain. The reason Soul Drain is not in the main deck, although it is an anti tier card, is because it's not really good against a lot of other matchups. Unlike cards like DDG and whatnot that just make it so that your opponent can't get cards in the graveyard, keep in mind a lot of these decks are not using graveyard effects. They just need their cards in the graveyard to either revive them or use them for other things. Whereas Soul Drain is one of those cards that's specifically really good against tier limit, so you can side this in against a tier limit matchup. And then you have Imperial Ironwall, which is just a really good card against the Flunderies matchup. So that's why I'm just showing you guys this little side deck. Don't build this deck with this exact side deck i'm just showing you guys different options another option for the kaijus are like evenly matched lava golem sphere mode cards to just help break boards are really important because when you're going second that's kind of when this deck struggles the most so if you guys want to swap out these kaijus lava golem sphere modes evenly matched those are all very relevant cards so i just wanted to show you guys this deck profile i think it's a really really cool deck i think you guys should definitely try it out for yourselves this is the anti-tier limit anti-tier zero yo send you deck profile so that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. Now, if you guys saw that build, you guys might be looking at it and saying, hey, that's a lot of hate for a single deck. But the really cool thing is all the anti-meta cards that we are playing in the deck are good against so many different decks. Yes, it's an anti tier limits deck. Yes, it's a deck that essentially makes it so that if you are playing against what is the tier zero format, which is the Ishizu tier limits, you guys can still play against Sprite and other meta decks and still do really, really good with this because all of these cards are are pretty generic and they just generically hit everything but they are blowout cards against tier limits if you guys have any suggestions obviously let me know in the comment section down below but if you guys did enjoy also leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you guys haven't already we're on the way to 8,000. without you guys i wouldn't be here we just hit 7,500 not too long ago we're on the way to 8,000. i believe we can make it happen thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you and with that Benko signing out peace